You're just bringing these things to whatnot because you don't want to put them on eBay because it's not stuff people would buy on eBay. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, this is gonna be different than my normal videos, but if you're a reseller, I encourage you to stick around because what I'm about to tell you could change your reselling business. Hey, Bolo Buddies, thanks for watching. All right, let's get started. Seriously, um, I did my first whatnot. And to be honest with you, I was telling my viewers, August, I'm going to do it in August. And I didn't do it until December. <laughs> and I am sorry about that. I did not mean to like tell a fib. Uh, I, my intentions were good, but oh my goodness, you know, just life and all the things that I've been trying to do and building my YouTube channel and... Um, I sell on eBay, Mercari, and Poshmark. So, I mean, I'm busy. <laughs> and I just never got around to really taking the time to learn the platform. So the other day, but before I get into that. Okay, Bolo Buddies, I have my third whatnot show tonight. It is going to be at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I am bringing vintage Christmas to now, mostly vintage. And if you guys use my referral link down below, you can get $15 to shop when you join Whatnot. So check that out down below and I hope to see you. Let's, let me tell you what I'm going to talk about in this video, okay? I'm going to tell you about my experience, okay? And I went live two different ways. I've done it twice now. I went in a frontal view like this where I was showing the items and you could see me. And then I also did where the camera was panned down on my items and I did it that way. There are some differences and things you have to do differently, so we're going to talk about that. I'm going to tell you, was it successful? How did it go? I'm going to tell you um, things not to do, things that I learned uh, from doing my first two shows. What I underestimated and what surprised me the most, and some key points to having a successful auction. I actually took notes. This is so not like me. Like, I'm usually like, I'm going to tell you where I got it, what I paid for it, and what it sold for. If you guys are new here, I do BOLO videos. I tell you about items to be on the lookout for, items you can buy low, hopefully, and sell for a profit. Um, so this is really different, but I know that people that watch me are resellers, and I think you need to know about this platform. Um, and one thing I forgot to do, okay, and what I did to remedy that. So I got lucky. But anyway, we are going to get started here with what surprised me the most. What surprised me the most is that I absolutely loved it. Um, it was kind of like the first time I went to the Goodwill Benz, I was kind of like, I don't know what I think about this. Uh, and I went and I, I, I wasn't sure. And then I went back and then I went back. It took me a few times, but now I am obsessed in the Goodwill bins. And if you guys want to see Goodwill bins videos where I'm like digging through and I show you how I listed everything on eBay, definitely check out my Goodwill bins video. But we're not here to talk about the Goodwill bins. So that is what surprised me the, no the most. I loved it. I loved the interaction with the audience. I loved showing the items, being live. Um, I felt very comfortable. But, you know, there are some there's a learning curve, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Okay. So let's talk about my first show. So my first show was, I was talking to you guys like this and I was showing items and literally at 9am, I said, I'm going live today on whatnot, because if I don't do it, I'm never going to do it. So I set up the thing the on whatnot. And I'm like, I have no clue what I'm doing. I sent my girl, Rachel Strickland, a few messages. If you're not following her on YouTube, it is a must. She's got some tutorials on whatnot that are great. She is also on whatnot and she is awesome. And she, she has awesome YouTube content and check out her whatnot, check out her YouTube and check out her Instagram. Rachel Strickland, her channel is her name. But if I did not have Rachel 
to help me through this, oh my goodness, I would have been a complete mess. And um, like I said, this was on a Friday and I did this unplanned. So I'm messaging her knowing that she does Meals on Wheels on Friday. And I'm like, oh my goodness, she's not going to get back with me. What am I going to do? I was kind of freaking out. And she still got back with me in between doing her Meals on Wheels. So man, I just, Rachel, if you're watching, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for helping me. Okay. So the first one was front on. What I did is I set it up. Okay. I gave myself two hours and I'm like, today I'm not going to plan what I'm going to bring. And in my mind, I kind of just wanted to do, I don't want to take photos. I don't want to take um, measurements. I don't want to do a description. I don't want to make it harder than it has to be. Because if I'm going to do that, like I can put it on a selling platform. I want this to be a quick process, but still very functional and good for my audience and good for me, if that makes sense. Plus, I more just wanted it to pull random items. So I filled my area with a bunch of stuff that I knew I wanted to sell. And I just started showing stuff. What I did is I set things up by weight class, all right? So I put 20 items at the three ounce, um, 20 items at the next weight class, which is four to seven ounces, and so on and so forth. I kind of looked at what I had, determined which weight classes they would be in, and decided how many to do of each, all right? Is this a perfect system? No. Could you run into problems? Yes. I would say put more than you need. So um, let's say one through 20 was three ounces. I may not use all of them. So I just kept a little piece of paper. Here's my note, it's kind of messy. This was when I actually did my second show. And that way I knew which numbers were which weight class. So that was beside me. Okay, so I do have a referral link down below. You can click on that link and you will get a shopping credit. So uh, definitely consider using my link. But if you want to be a seller on whatnot, I also have a separate link for that. If you click on that, um, it, I think it takes it to like a different area. It considers that I referred you and you may be more likely to get accepted quicker. That is what I have been told. Can I verify that? All I can tell you in my experience, I used a code and I was accepted immediately. So I don't know, but I've got my seller link down there and then I've also got the buyer link down there. So I did a test stream. And when I tried to turn off the test stream, it, it said that it was turned off, but it wasn't. So I had to go in, cancel the show, and Rachel taught me how to clone my items. So I hit clone, but it didn't show me that it cloned. So I hit clone again, and it cloned everything two times, which it ended up being okay, but I had double. So um, be careful you don't clone twice. And so I was mentioning kind of, I'm kind of all over the place here because I'm winging this, but I do have notes. So I numbered my items, let's say one through 100, and then put those in the different weight classes. What I then did, I had baggies ready to go. And I took a Sharpie. Now, if you guys do whatnot and you have a suggestion on a maybe more like economical way to do this because those plastic bags are pretty much toast. I guess I could cross them out and use them again, but um, that was the only logical thing I could think of is once I sell the item, I'm gonna put it in a bag. I'm gonna write who bought it on the bag, and that was a suggestion from one of you that came to my whatnot show, write the seller or the buyer on the bag. I also wrote the number on the bag. So if it was item one, it was one, and we'll say Rachel Strickland, and I just wrote it out. So all of my bags are there. My second auction, what I did was choice. So I numbered my items one through 100 and I put number one, item one, choice. Item two, choice. And copy paste into the description. That's all I did. But it takes a while, it really does. If you do 100 items, you have to set it up for each one. So I numbered um, my area in front of me, one through eight, and I pulled out Christmas ornaments and I put them on one through eight and I let people bid and they got to pick which one they wanted. So then I grab my plastic bag, I write the item number on it, not the item number they picked, be careful, don't do that, I did that a few times, but the item number that was on the actual um, whatnot screen, okay? 
So one question that I had from Rachel Strickland, and it's probably like one of those that it's so obvious once you do it. I'm like, if I have my camera facing down and it is recording my table so that the people can see the items and not see me, can I start the auction from my computer? Yes. So I had my phone facing down. I had my computer to the side and I hit start auction. You can also manually add an item. So I got to a weight class where I bundled some stuff together and it was in a weight class that I didn't have. So I hit add item and I just did it right then, start auction. So you can also add items, but it is a little bit more of a delay and your people are waiting on you to do that. So I recommend having some sort of plan, things in your store. Okay, what else I learned? Buy it now. I recommend that you have something in your buy it now. So I had these really cute dog magnets and I'm like, I'm just gonna put these in the buy it now. They weigh like one ounce. Maybe somebody will want this as a stocking stuffer. But what did I do wrong? I didn't mention my buy it nows. So I was on um, Primetime Treasure Hunters whatnot last night and his wife was doing an auction on jewelry. And she's so smart. She's like, and I have this item in the buy it now and this item in the buy it now and I'm like, Duh, you got to tell people what the item is in the buy it now. So show your buy it now items. That's one thing I learned. Um, let's see. What else did I want to talk about? Did I prefer one way or the other as far as being forward or having my items down? Mm, not really. I am comfortable in front of the camera. So that was fun for me, but I was not comfortable. <laughs> I was in my laundry room and it the setup was not good. The setup for the second show was better. So if I do my next one forward like this, which I think I'm going to do vintage lingerie or vintage clothing, um, I'll probably hold the items up and I'll do it down here where I'm more comfortable in a chair and whatnot. And whatnot. Ah. Okay, sorry, bad joke. Um, so... I also have a ton of crafters items coming. I will do a preview of that haul on this channel before I go over to Whatnot and do it because it is just incredible. I gave you guys a sneak peek in another video, but why am I bringing these things to Whatnot? You're just bringing these things to Whatnot because you don't want to put them on eBay because it's not stuff people would buy on eBay. No, no, that's not what I'm doing. No, now I will agree with you. I am bringing some of these items to whatnot because I have no interest in listing them on eBay. Why? Because I don't want to list these items on eBay because of a personal choice. So I used to be a full-time reseller, okay? And I did, uh, no, I'm still a full-time reseller. I used to be a full-time clothing reseller. That's all I did. I would go into discount stores and I would buy things cheap and I would resell them. Clothing, clothing, clothing. That's all I did. About, I'm going to say four and a half years ago, right before I started this channel, I switched to hard goods. So now when I think about clothing, I'm like, <laughs> these behind me are all jeans. And when I tell you it was kind of like a, I don't want to do clothing anymore moment. It literally was. I have a whole walk-in closet full of new with tags clothing. Um, most of it is express uh, brand and like Lane Bryant, stuff like that. Really great items that do sell. But um, I just I, I just can't get motivated to do it because you guys, if you watched my hoarder video, you know how much inventory I have to list. Stuff I like listing. So if I list these pair of jeans, I'm going to have to measure the bottom, the inseam, the rise, across the waist, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do it anymore. I just lost interest. I got burnout. I mean, I did it for, oh, geez. I started reselling in 2005. So I don't know. I can't figure out all the numbers. Too much thinking. Like 10 years I did clothing and I loved it. I absolutely loved it. So I'm not against um, the idea behind selling clothing. I know you can do it. I had a super successful clothing business and uh, I just lost interest and I'm more excited about the hard goods. So will these items and the items in the closet be coming to whatnot? I don't know. I haven't really thought about that. If you guys would be interested in seeing new with tags items, um, let me know. I, I guess uh, they're just sitting in that closet. Uh, 
I don't know. So, I mean, nice stuff. I should, um, I've got these men's express button down shirts that are like light pink and light, like pur light purple. They're lovely, lovely Easter um, colors. And I have sold out of them multiple times because I kept buying them from the same discount store. And these are just items that I haven't got listed. Again, I quit clothes. And so they are great items, but you know, you have to get a good value for your item to be able to resell it. And Express is not a super high-end brand where you're going to get a ton of money for it. If these say $88 on them, you know, depending on the style and the cut and what's trending, you might get 30, or I'm sorry, 15, with new with tags, 15 to 50 bucks. It really just depends on the style and what's trending. If it's not trending, you know, they're going to sit forever if you price them too high. I typically, these types of jeans, I usually price in the $30 to $40 range, but I'm also a long tail seller and willing to wait. I also run sales. I take best offer, but let's get back to whatnot. Sorry, I'm getting totally off base here. Um, what I underestimated, we're going to get to that. One thing I forgot I forgot the phone charger. I had everything set up. I had my scale on my right, my computer on my left, and I had my phone facing down in front of me when I did the ornaments. Perfect setup. And I'm like, oh, I forgot my charger. And I'm sitting here and I'm live. And this is like an hour, maybe more into the show. And I'm like texting my husband and I'm like, can you bring me the phone charger? And thankfully he was still up. So he brought me down the phone charger, plugged it in, make sure your phone is plugged in because it will take your battery by going live. All right, so have a charger. Let's see. Uh, one thing that I recommend that you do not do is don't bring items that people are going to be disappointed in, okay? Um, I have purchased and been disappointed. I will say that. And I have been, I have purchased and been very, very happy. That is with any selling platform. The part I was disappointed about is when I got my items, the flaws and the issues, they weren't disclosed. It's one thing to sell something with a flaw. So let's say I have this ornament right here and I'm gonna sell this ornament to you. And it has a chip up here. That's not that big of a deal. That chip can be color, uh, covered with yellow paint. That can be fixed. But if I sell this to you and I don't mention that chip, you're going to be disappointed when you get it. You may not be mad because you know you can fix it, but would you have preferred that I mentioned it? You may not have paid as much for this ornament if you knew that it was um, damaged. Clothing, another story. If I have these jeans and I'm going to sell them to you and they're stained, you need to tell your audience what they're bidding on. Show them that stain, okay? Because I can guarantee you they're probably not going to buy the item if it's got a big stain on it. I mean, they might, but I mean, we're talking about a vintage ornament versus new with tags clothing or clothing that you've picked up. I ask myself, would I list this on eBay? Would I list this on Mercari? Would I list this on Poshmark? I want to bring good things to whatnot. Um, am I catering to the reseller? Not necessarily. Um, could somebody buy something from me and resell it? Yeah, they could. They most definitely could. But that's really not what I'm catering to. So I'm doing one-offs or small lots. I'm not bringing big bundles, okay? What did I underestimate? I underestimated the amount of time it was going to take me to ship. <laughs> so I just want to give a huge shout out to Donatella Bottolino and Auctions for You because I have been buying from their YouTube channel for about, oh gosh, I would say three years. And those ladies go live on each other's channels almost every day of the week. And when I tell you how many orders they're fulfilling, in one show, but they do wholesale reseller lots, okay? So they're showing like however many items and you're bidding on them at a live auction, okay? And then they have to go and package all that stuff. Oh my goodness. Like I knew it was a lot, but until you like experience it and do it, 
Oh my goodness. So I sold 77 items at my whatnot auction. 22 different people bought those. So you got to remember my bags were labeled with a name and a number. So I took all of the ones with the same names and I put them on my floor. So they were already in piles ready for me to go. Now, one thing, you guys, if you watch my channel, you know I love breakables. What on earth was I thinking? I had so many ornaments that were breakables. It's kind of funny looking back um, because I just went to my garage and I'm like, I have all these great ornaments. I'm just going to put them in a thing and I'm just going to show them. And I really didn't think about the shipping part of it. And um, I'm one of those that I'm over the top with my shipping. I'm very cautious. Uh, so I use probably more bubble wrap than I need. Sometimes I'll box in a box, but there were things I, that it was just unexpected how long it took. But then... After I did my whatnot shipments, I had like 50 shipments between, um, this is for Saturday and Sunday. I sold about 50 things on Poshmark, Mercari, and eBay total. And I looked at how long that took me to ship, and it took a long time also. So maybe I'm just a slow shipper. I don't know. But um, again, shout out to Donatella Bottolino and Auctions for You. Auctions for You is also on whatnot. She is T auctions for you. So definitely follow her. And that's a four and a U. So I'll try to pop it up right here. Um, so definitely follow T over there. Follow Rachel Strickland over there. Follow Primetime Treasure Hunter on whatnot. Um, follow them all on YouTube also. Um, they are incredible. And I can't, I can't say enough good things about all four of these people. Rachel Strickland, um, Dominic, Primetime Treasure Hunter, Donatella Bottolino, T Auctions for You. I mean, all four of them have helped me tremendously in my reselling business. They are wonderful people. And again, I, I have been buying from Donna and T for probably three years. I think it's maybe even longer and always been happy. So check them out on YouTube as well. Um, I'll link all four of them down below. So make sure you follow them, okay? Uh, let me see. Is there anything else I wanted to talk to you guys about? Mention the buy it now. Uh, make sure you're organized. I think that is the number one thing. Oh, 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 schedule ahead. Okay, so the first show was kind of, it was a pop-up. I didn't advertise it. I put a little post on my Instagram right when I was going live. Um, did I still have a decent turnout? Did I still sell stuff? Yes. I, I think I sold 22 items on the first show. And again, it was a shorter show. It was just kind of like a hodgepodge of things, but I consider it successful, um, for my first show. And if you came to either one of my shows, <gasps> thank you so much. I appreciate you. I am Bolo Buddies on whatnot. Be sure to follow me. Um, I'm going to be going live again soon. Um, again, looking at, okay, Bolo Buddies, these are part of my first whatnot auction. It's probably going to be Christmas themed. Uh, most of these are ornaments and Christmas decor. Um, still have tons to go through. Just wanted to give you guys a small preview of what will definitely be there. I just adore this one. Um, but I plan to do jewelry, vintage clothing. I'm gonna branch out into a lot of different categories. So make sure you are following me. Thanks for watching. <laughs> vintage lingerie, vintage clothing, and a huge crafter's lot, like three, four totes full of craft items. Just incredible. Um, why am I not putting the craft items on eBay? Um, because it will take me forever because I will try to look everything up and I will make it way more difficult than it has to be. And I can bring it to whatnot and I can show you guys that do jewelry and make stuff what it is. I'm going to put it in my hands and show you the item and you're going to decide the value. Okay. I don't, I just, it's too much. I want to, I like toys, you know, like toys are my thing. I really enjoy putting toys. Now, do you guys want me to bring toys to whatnot? So it's something I'm thinking about, but this is definitely a platform that I am planning on branching out on. Um, if you're going to have a show, make sure you allot enough time to get your shipping done. 
okay, so that you're not like stressing about it. Last night I was up until uh, I think 1.20 in the morning shipping. <laughs> <laughs> and I did have an elephant. It was in the wrong tote. I uh, used my custom skew on eBay to uh, find my items. And it says plush tote nine. And I'm like digging through plush tote nine. And nope, didn't find it. So I went to eight and seven and six and five. And I looked through them all. And then I looked through nine again. And then I looked through eight again. And I kept looking through these totes. And I'm like, Courtney, why are you doing this? You know how to find an item that is lost. What you do is... If you have it in the custom SKU, you go in to the item that sold and you look at the date it sold, okay? So it said, or I'm sorry, the date it was listed, not the date it sold. You look at the date it was listed. You then go into your active listings and you filter it by date and you find the things that you listed on that same date. And I'm nine times out of 10, this works. It is gonna be in one of the totes that you listed on the same day. Now, I recently did a video uh, where somebody uh, bought something on Whatnot for $20 and sold it for $997 on eBay. And I posted this in um, a Facebook group. And somebody said that I was uh, teaching people to come and not bid up the items because they need to get the item for a low price to resell it. And I said, I don't agree. <laughs> I don't even know if they watched the video. I said, this is simply a what sold video where I'm telling you where the person purchased the item. And um, actually, I think knowledge is power. So if I knew that that item was going to sell for $1,000 and I'm watching a whatnot auction that's selling that item wouldn't I bid the item up higher? So wouldn't you get more for your item because you watched my video? So I think that this would help the seller. And I don't know. What do you guys think? Um, let's see, another thing. They also asked if I share when people buy something on a platform like Mercari or Poshmark or eBay and they resell it on eBay. And I said, absolutely. I share what you guys tell me. If I'm sharing your bolos, I ask you where you got it, what you paid for it and what it sold for. I don't care where you got it. Like I'm going to tell the audience where you got it. Um, I've had people buy things on Mercari super cheap. I've said a hundred times, Mercari is a great place to source. Um, okay, maybe I haven't said it a hundred times, but I've mentioned it a lot, that Mercari is a great place to source. A lot of times, same with Poshmark, a lot of times they're hobby sellers, people um, that really don't care about reselling. They're just trying to get rid of things in their home and they really don't look up comps. They just list the item. And um, there's a good chance you could find something on one of those platforms to flip. For sure, 100%. If you're not on Poshmark and Mercari as a seller and you want to be a seller on those platforms, awesome. But if you're not on those platforms and you're a buyer, you definitely should get on those platforms. I do have referral links down below. Um, for Mercari, if you um, use the link, it's my referral link to join, you'll get $10 when you join. And then if you sell $100 worth of stuff, you'll get another $20. And that is money to shop on the platform. Poshmark, you get 10 bucks to shop on the platform. Again, those are my referral links. So I get a little bonus too. So I appreciate it if you guys use those referral links down in the description. Um, I think that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Again, sorry, I was kind of all over the place. This is not my typical video. Uh, somebody did ask me about my merch. This is my second sweatshirt. The other one you guys see me wear all the time. It's got my Bolo Buddies logo across the front. If you guys are interested in sweatshirts, t-shirts, all that stuff, I do have merch. Uh, no pressure to get merch. It's just the link's down there if you want it. Um, so with that being said, okay, I purchased these items on Whatnot from 360 Vintage. And um, he makes his own jewelry and he also sells jewelry. Um, just that he buys. So let's get this out of here. And I have known Ron for a while through, not personally like met him, but just through uh, Facebook and stuff for quite a while. All right, we are gonna take a peek at what we've got here. So he actually made these. This is a floral uh, silver plate 
spoon uh, bracelet and it's silver plated. So it's actually a uh, spoon. So really, really pretty little cuff. And I got this for $2. So that is super cool. And he did a great job of everything being really organized. You can see that this was um, number six. So I can line it up here on my sheet and know that I paid $2 for this. Okay, this is number four. Okay, so this is my giveaway that I won. And this is also another item that he made. It is a, um, a spoon ring. So you can see right there, it comes together. And that's also a silver plate. So very, very cool. That was a uh, freebie. This item is number 27. So let's look on our list. Sterling silver thong sandal necklace. I paid $3 for this and he did disclose that the chain has a tiny knot that he couldn't get out. So my husband can usually get stuff like that out. Um, it might be a little more knotted now from shipment. Ah, um, Let me see here. Let's see if we can get this out of here. Okay, there we go. So you can see it right here. It's really tiny, but if you take a needle, I'm pretty sure you can get that out. So this is just really, really cute little sterling silver piece. You can see right there, it's marked 925. And I got that for $3. So I will be listing that. Number 11 is a silver plate full wrap chunky spoon ring. And he made this also. How cool is that? It wraps around right here. And I paid $2 for that also. Silver plate, super cool. He makes really beautiful jewelry. Definitely check out his site. This one is number 16. Um, trying to find it here. Where is 16? Oh, two pair of silver plate stud earrings. He also made these. These are really, really cool. I love these. They're made out of um, silverware. So the top of uh, silverware, like the ornate decorative part. How cool are these? Aren't those neat? So I ended up paying uh, $2 for both pair. I mean, that is fantastic. So super excited about those. Just really nice quality stuff. Uh, this one is number 21. It is a vintage sterling silver onyx Thunderbird pendant. And I did pay $3 for this one. You can see there. And on the back, it is marked sterling and it looks like it has like a leaf hallmark this item right here has two numbers stuck to it i think the five came off something else so number 20 let's see 20 heavy sterling silver south carolina state flag pendant i paid five dollars for this so this one um it's got the i guess it says south carolina i don't know but you can see this is what the back looks like. And I want to say it's marked down in this area, 925. So I did get that as well. Here is another um, cuff bracelet. $2. And these were all auction and I bid and this is what I won them for. So this was one of his earlier auctions. So um, this one was also $2. Again, just really pretty uh, spoon that has been, or I think it's a spoon that's been turned into a bracelet. This one I paid a lot of four pair of vintage earrings. I paid $3 for these. So um, let's take a peek here. This one broke but it can be glued back together. It probably just got banged around in transit, but pretty cool little uh, screw back there. That's probably an easy fix. It's got a little bit of yuck on it, so I don't know if I'll even mess with repairing that. And that happens with vintage jewelry. This one is a clip-on. I don't think these are signed or anything, you know, super fancy. 
Here's the match clip on. So again, paid three dollars for these. This one, it's got a, it's like a, a leaf. This one says something right here, twelve karat gold filled. So it's like kind of I don't know, like a shooting shooting pearls. <laughs> they do need cleaned up, but uh, screw back, and those are gold filled. So maybe have my husband look at those see if he can get them cleaned up for me i'm not much into cleaning stuff i don't like cleaning stuff i don't like fixing stuff so um that was three dollars so that is everything i got all right so that was again 360 vintage he is on instagram he is on ebay he is on youtube as well tiktok and whatnot so be sure to follow him okay I have one more thing I want to show you here. Okay, so this came from Auctions For You. And it came from her, but it didn't come from her. Um, I actually got two gifts. And I'm trying to remember who the shirt was from. Somebody had won a shirt, and they already had one. So they... Um, sent it to me and it is we'll show you that in a minute auctions for you wishes you a merry christmas i already had the other shirt um the original shirt from auctions for you so she sent me the christmas shirt and that is awesome and i want to say it was barbara that gifted me this because she won it and already had a shirt so that was from auctions for you and then um auctions for you t was having a special show where she was um doing like a where you pick what you want and Christopher won and his uh, YouTube channel is I buy chit and it's C-H-I-T and he gifted this set to me I got this necklace which is sterling silver so this was super nice of him and he's like keep it sell it do whatever you want with it and Christopher is just known to do that he is super generous super kind heart and um I was in the chat and he decided that he wanted to pass this along to me so that was super super sweet and here is the other item and it is um it's marked I can't it's 925 Judith something I can't I don't have a loop or anything but right on the inside it says Judith something and it's 925 I don't know what um I don't know what type of stone that is. I have no idea, but just a pretty little ring. So thank you, Christopher. I really, really appreciate it. Um, really nice of you to do that for me. So those are the things that I wanted to share with you guys in this video. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> and Comment below with any questions. I will do my best to help you. And if I don't have an answer, um, I'll get Rachel Strickland. <laughs> Aha, Rachel, sorry. All right, thanks.